Cyclone Ilsa has intensified really quickly in the last hours and is now a category 2 tropical cyclone based on our latest analysis. Its position 15.8 degrees south, 119.8 degrees east. As I said before, it's a category 2 tropical cyclone with winds of 100 miles per hour and a pressure of 973 millibars and moving to the southwest at 6 miles per hour. It's about time when Ilsa starts to move towards the south and then doing a sharp turn to the southeast in the next hours and moving on shore maybe by April the 14th local time. Right now, April 12th local time on Perth. And about the wind field of this tropical cyclone, well, uh, tropical storm force winds are extending 65 nautical miles to the northeastern quadrant, 70 nautical miles to the uh, to the southwestern southeastern quadrant, sorry, 65 nautical miles to the southwestern quadrant, and 60 nautical miles to the northwestern quadrant so far. And right now, the cyclone is positioned be 343 kilometers west of Cape Lebec, 348 kilometers northwest of Broome, 436 kilometers west northwest of from Derby, 455 kilometers north of Wallal Downs, and 531 kilometers north northeast of Port Hetland. Possibly Wallal Downs is going to take a almost a direct hit by this tropical cyclone in the next 36 to 48 hours possibly. And also it's a tropical cyclone watch from Beagle Bay to Wim Creek including Port Hetland and Broome and inland adjacent areas of uh, to Telfer, sorry. Also a flood watch in effect for West Kimberley rivers, the Grey River, Western Desert and Sandy Desert. And about our projections, about what we estimate about Cyclone compared to the other agencies, the Bureau of Meteorology is the most conservative one, estimating 80 miles per hour sustained winds, category 1 tro uh, tropical cyclone, as well as the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, category 1, but a little bit stronger, uh, which is 90 miles per hour, and for 13, uh, we are estimating it's a 100 miles per hour tropical cyclone. But the system has been struggling with uh, some dry air in the last hours, so possibly slightly weaker than that, but still maybe it's a category 2 a tropical cyclone. And about its future, well, it's expected to be a, sig a significant tropical cyclone, maybe intensifying into a category 4 tropical cyclone on the Sapphire Simpson scale with winds going up high to 150 miles per hour could be less but still a quite strong tropical cyclone is expected to well to be in the next uh, 24 36 hours and make landfall possibly at peak intensity and that's because the sea surface temperatures are extremely warm when uh, where ill sites located right now between 31 32 degrees uh, celsius and on its current location which is extremely warm and favorable for further intens intensification and that's why has, uh, Ilsa has deepened quite quickly in the last hours. And well, we are expecting between 8 to 12 inches in the coastal lines of Western Australia and the rain is going to remain compact as the system is also rather small but still good amounts of rain are going to to getting up in a uh, way way too far from it to maybe south wales new south wales and also the southern part of the northern territory as it as ilsa moves rapidly to the east also the winds expected really extreme really high more than 114 knots up to 135 knots or even more as it progresses to the south when, when it's expected to do so in the next hours 
and then uh, rapidly dissipating, rapidly weakening as soon as makes landfall. And the different models are predicting that uh, this tropical cyclone is going to intensify into a category 4 tropical cyclone maybe by the same hour and the next day. So it's going to be a significant in intensification rate from now, which is going to be an extremely dangerous situation for the people nearby in the western, in the, in the western part of Australia, Western Australia territory, which it's not a populated area that much, but still there are some people that could, uh, that could receive some direct effects from this tropical cyclone. And about the wind shear, it's going to remain low and quite uh, increasing, but slightly not enough to actually affect the tropical cyclone. So, well, that's not good news at all for the people in Western Australia. But still, the, high, the low, the low shear, and of course the high sea surface temperatures are the perfect combination for such an intense storm that is going to be in the next hours. The track is expected to be the same to the south in the next hours and then sharply turning to the southeast and progressively turning to the east as it dissipates. Sea surface temperatures 30, 31 degrees Celsius, 32 in some parts and the humidity remaining high between 75 and 80 percent overall. And we have new floaters and satellite imagery for you in our Forster Teams website. So you better have uh, you better take a look at that and of course enjoy enjoy everything we have uh, brand new in our social well in our social media as well, but in the in the Forster Teams website as well. So please uh, take a look at that and enjoy it. And that's all for now and see you on the next update.